Hi, everybody. Welcome to 15 and 15. Today, we are spotlighting librarian Alice Pierman. Take it away, Alice. Thank you, Robin. So today, I am here to talk about a relatively new uh, collection of databases in Lamson Library. Uh, this summer, we were fortunate enough to acquire access to a collection of primary sources uh, from the vendor Redex. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we will navigate to where those are located. All right, so library databases on the Lamson homepage, and I'm just going to try to move that thing out of the way and click the letter R to take a very quick shortcut to Redex. All right, so I just want to mention that acquiring access to this collection of databases was a cooperative effort among all the USNH libraries. So our colleagues at Keene and UNH uh, have access to these resources as well. All right, here we are. So you'll notice right away, um, this is a collection of databases. There's a whole bunch of them. Uh, we will look more closely at what each one is in a few minutes. Um, but when I started thinking about how I might present this, I thought about um, our colleague, uh, Dr. Becky Noel, a history professor here at PSU. Uh, I think about a year and a half ago, she talked of, she did a presentation about Nathaniel Peabody Rogers, who was a New Hampshire abolitionist back in pre-Civil War years before that was okay. All right. Uh, and I just, I was really fascinating. And I, so when I got access to this, I thought, oh, I wonder what I can find about Nathaniel Peabody Rogers in here. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and search for him. I did learn uh, in my initial searches that if I'm looking for a phrase or, or name that I really want to be in that order, uh, putting those quotes around it is pretty uh, useful in this database. It really helps bring uh, more relevant results. All right, so here we are. Pretty typical database behavior. I have 64 results. Uh, we can see on the left some of the databases that it found uh, Nathaniel in are African American periodicals, uh, America's historical, historical imprints, um, historical, historical newspapers. I'm just going to go ahead and click on this first result. So this is an imprint, which I believe is historical for a book published in the 19th century. <laughs> I'm not really sure why they call them imprints. I am not at that level, uh, but that is basically what this is, uh, published in 1884. Let's see what we've got here. All right, wow, okay, so cool. Uh, we've been taken to a table of contents. He is highlighted. There is a whole chapter about this person. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, let's see here. To navigate to this, I got, I will admit the first time I did this, I was a little stymied, like, well, how do I get to page 28? Um, the best way to do it is over here on the left side and you can page through the book from here. And that should take me right there, there it is. Okay, so he also shows up on this page, unsurprisingly. I'm actually going to zoom out a little bit. I just find that to be very close for me, that's me. And so you can see there's a few different tools here for viewing and there's a couple options too for just kind of navigating through the page. I can click and drag. I can also use this red box here on the right side, which I find to be actually a little more helpful. Uh, so I can do that. And so here we are at the beginning. And when I initially looked at this, I immediately was drawn to the second paragraph in the cemeteries of Concord, New Hampshire. I live in Concord, New Hampshire. So immediately I was like, oh, what, what about the cemeteries in Concord? Uh, and it looks like our author has conducted many devout pilgrims uh, to this cemetery where slumber the mortal remains of Nathaniel P. Valley Rogers. And it goes on to say that there, there was no monument. So at this point, and now I have to remind myself, when was this published? I don't remember. Uh, I will click the view details, okay, in 1884. Uh, there was no monument at the site at all, uh, which is curious. All right, so I've found some pretty good information. I've got a whole chapter, uh, so I might want to come back and look at this for my research. Um, right now, I might want to use some of the you know pretty common tools that we find in databases. You can cite your resource, generate a citation, um, download pages or a page, print or email if you want to do any of those things, and then just close that back up. 
Uh, but for purposes of this demonstration, I'm just gonna go ahead and click back to my initial results. And at this point, I'm curious now to see what kind of results are in the historical newspapers collection specifically. So I'll just click on that. And now at this point, of course, I mean, I have to confess, I did, you know, do this search before my presentation today, right? Um, but it really didn't take me long to find these resources at all, which is pretty cool. Uh, so this one, uh, this is from the Cleveland Plain Dealer, and it says that the abolitionist Nathaniel Peabody Rogers requested before his death uh, that no stone should mark his grave so long as a slave lived in the United States. Uh, so that explains why there was no marker, but you know, that was, that book was published long after slavery was abolished in this country. Uh, so now an association has been formed to place a monument. How cool is that? I mean, that's really neat. So, you know, I might now want to do a little more research into that. Well, you know, what was the organization? Um, this is published in Ohio. He's clearly nationally known. Um, so really quite interesting. Uh, at this point, you know, I think a serious researcher would be wondering, well, wait, um, what, what is this? So this is the Cleveland Plain Dealer. Um, we've got some resources uh, here from Lowell. Um, what is in this America's Historical Newspapers? Is there like a title list? Um, I am disappointed to say that there is not a title list in the database, which is a little surprising, uh, but we can get to one for sure. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy uh, the name of the database just to make this easier. Just go to my good friend Google and say, you know what, Redex, America's Historical Newspapers, title list, and yay, they do have one. They have one for all of their different resources. So a little frustrating they have to leave the database to find it, but you can certainly do that. And here it is. Um, and again, this is very static, uh, but it is organized by state and city. So we can always do our friendly control F for New Hampshire. I cannot see what I am typing, which makes this very difficult. Okay, phew. Um, great, so New Hampshire. And then we can see all of the different titles and cities. This was, um, I think I heard Becky say herself, this was the golden era of newspapers. So there are a lot of them. Um, this and, is legit amazing. I just have to stop. Right? Say, wow, <laughs> yeah, wow. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's so many If you just look at Exeter and like how many different newspapers and like some of them, you know, they only have six issues, but this one, you know, there's 1,388 issues of this newsletter and Rockingham Advertiser. Um, so there's just an enormous amount of information here. It's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, so obviously, if you weren't in New Hampshire, wanted to know New Hampshire, you could look at something else. Um, the one thing I did discover that's a little not my favorite, um, is if I were really just interested in searching the Lake, the New Hampshire Sentinel, for example, I couldn't really find a great way to do that. Um, so if I go back, um, what I can do, I can click on the advanced search and that will open up more specific options. So I've still got my search here. Um, I could add a row, remove a row. Um, and I could search for the place of publication um, so I could put in Keene, um, and I thought that it might work to search the citation text for the title of the newspaper, but that didn't work quite as well as I thought it would. <laughs> so I'm not sure if that's um, a problem or if that's by design. So I'm actually going to do some research to find out. Uh, but we could at least uh, look and just kind of browse just the Keene newspapers, although that's an enormous number of entries. Oh, but you could search within those. So that's pretty cool. All right, um, so most of the resources in this database are um, you know, American historical type stuff. So if I go back to the homepage, you'll notice there are 44 that you can access from here. Uh, and I'm just going to deselect that real quick and kind of look through them. So we have African-American periodicals, there's the historical imprints. So those are 19th century books. Uh, the historical newspapers. So these are all little mini collections in that larger collection. Uh, we also have like civil rights in America. That's, you know, much more recent, obviously. Uh, Native American tribal histories are here. Uh, but some of these go beyond our borders. So we also have the Pravda archive. 
So Pravda was the official newspaper of the Communist Party in Russia or the Soviet Union, excuse me. And so we have this. And so I thought, wow, what would I search for in Pravda? Um, and so really I thought, well, the first thing that kind of came to mind um, was our, our, old, our old friend Boris, Boris Yeltsin, who eventually became uh, the leader of Russia. So we'll just look for him, see what's in here. Okay, and I was a little like, oh, 474 results. I'm just looking to do a demonstration. How might I narrow that down a bit? Uh, let's just look at the results from the 80s uh, because he was not the leader yet in the 80s. Uh, these were the Gorbachev years. So what was Boris Yeltsin doing in Pravda in the 80s? Um, I should mention, so these are transcripts. Um, I did a little looking into what this is. Uh, and these are basically transcripts that a government organization put together. I think they were working with the CIA at the time and they you know, got some issues of Pravda and translated, I think what was relevant. Uh, so that's how we have access to this. And so everything's very typewritten and transcripty. Uh, so if we just kind of look through the results here, um, immediately this one looks interesting. Uh, Pravda cites claims of Yeltsin drunkenness. <laughs> from 1989. Uh, again, this is so big. I don't know why it's so big. Maybe everyone else is like, Alice, that was perfect, um, but not for me. All right, I am once again going to use this red box here to kind of navigate through the page. Uh, so, all right, the newspaper La Republica published an article about his visit, Yeltsin's visit to the United States. So this is a reprinting of that article in Pravda. All right, the American Knight of Perestroika reeks of whiskey and dollars. Wow, okay. Uh, <laughs> he is leaving a trail of predictions of disaster, crazy spending, interviews, and especially the smell of the famous Jack Daniels Black Label Kentucky whiskey, which apparently he's drinking alone in his hotel room. I want to know more. What? <laughs> so... I think unique to this database, I think there's this um, arrow here on the right and I'm going to click to keep going. All right, uh, Yeltsin presented the distraught honor professor, apparently his host uh, with a slobbering kiss. Wow, my goodness, oh my goodness. And it continues, uh, He in the five days and five nights he was in the United States, he hardly slept, he drank all the time. Oh my goodness, this is horrifying uh news and he demanded to be taken for a ride in a long black catalog wow okay so um i'm immediately as a researcher and a librarian um thinking maybe i need to get another point of view about yeltsin's visit to the united states uh so maybe i will now uh just kind of take a step back for a second here uh go back to our databases in the library and what other news databases do we have? Uh, let's see, I happen to know, being the librarian. Uh, here at the bottom, we have US Major Dailies and it gives us um, access to like the New York Times and the Washington Post uh, from 19 1985 to the present. So I am extremely tempted here uh, to do a little research in the New York Times and the Washington Post uh, in that time period and see what their coverage of Yeltsin's visit in the United States was. Um, certainly, this is a really interesting opportunity to his like explore not just history, obviously, but um, propaganda, journalism, all of that good stuff. Some really good opportunities here. Um, so, to conclude, uh, there is an enormous amount of historical value in our Redux databases and also apparently just some good old fashioned entertainment. Thank you. <laughs>